We can now answer the following essential question. How are the inverse of a matrix and the inverse of its transpose related? So right here on the board I have a matrix whose inverse we've already calculated. And that inverse is written down right here. Below I have the transpose of this matrix. And the question is what is its inverse and how is it related to this matrix, the inverse of the original matrix? Well, the inverse of this matrix can be calculated by the same row reduced echelon form that we use to calculate this inverse. As a matter of fact, you should now pause the video and calculate that inverse. And meanwhile, I'll write it down on the board. Here we go. All right, there it is. And lo and behold, this matrix is the transpose of this matrix. So the inverse of the transpose matrix is the transpose of the inverse of the original matrix. Another way of saying the same thing is that the order doesn't matter. You can invert a matrix first and then transpose the result and you would get this matrix right here. Or you can transpose the matrix first and then invert the result and you will get the very same matrix. So the operations of the inverse and the transpose commute, which can be written very concisely in the language of matrix algebra in the following way. That the inverse of the transpose equals the transpose of the inverse. And this is a very elegant a nice way and a very concise way of writing it down even though sometimes identities like this appear cryptic and need verbal interpretation. Being able to move both ways is a very valuable skill. Well what do we have to do now? Well at this point this very general result is just a conjecture. Why? Because we saw it with a single example and you may say well actually these matrices are uh, very similar Right? So the transpose of the matrix is almost the matrix itself with the exception of these two entries. So all I'm trying to say is, well maybe that was a coincidence. Let's show in general that this identity holds. Let's use matrix algebra. So I'm about to show you that proof and you will see that the proof itself is very elegant and very short. But I actually believe it's not so simple to come up with it. It requires a little bit of experience with matrix algebra. So maybe once again you should pause the video and try to figure it out on your own. The only difficulty really is getting started. So if I were to give you a hint, I might as well give you the entire proof. So try to figure it out on your own. Try by thinking, asking yourself, well what would it mean to be the inverse of the transpose? What would it mean? What kind of property would that matrix need to have in order to be that matrix? then write down what that would mean and then use matrix algebra to see where it leads you. Well, that's the suggestion, but here comes the proof. I will step out of the shot and ask myself this question now. Well, what would it mean for a matrix to be the inverse of a transpose if that's the claim that that's what it is? Well, it would mean that if we were to multiply it by a transpose, we would get the identity that's what would qualify this matrix as the inverse of a transpose. Being the inverse of a transpose means that if you were to multiply it by a transpose, you would get the identity matrix. Well, let's take this matrix, multiply it by a transpose, and see what we get. If we get the identity matrix, then yes, this matrix is the inverse of a transpose. If we don't get the identity matrix, well, then it's not. So, Let's multiply that matrix, a candidate for the inverse of a transpose. So here we go. A inverse transpose, which is the transpose of the inverse. It's a candidate for the inverse of a transpose. So if we multiply it by a transpose, the question is, is this product the identity matrix? And now we see the product of transposes of two matrices. We now know exactly how we can manipulate this product. It will equal the transpose of the product of the matrices themselves in the opposite order. 
We're now using the formula we just discovered and developed a little bit. In reverse, instead of going from the transpose of a product to the product of transposes, we're going from the product of transposes to the transpose of a product. So this product equals the transpose of the following matrix. It's the product of these individual matrices in the opposite order. So it's A, A inverse under the operation of the transpose. And what do we have in parentheses? We have A multiplying A inverse. Of course, it's the identity matrix. So the result is the identity matrix transposed. And you don't have to think about it for a long time. What's the transpose of the identity matrix? What happens to the identity matrix when you turn its columns into its rows? Well, its columns are exactly the same as its rows. So the transpose of the identity matrix is the identity matrix itself. And we have arrived at the desired answer, that this product is the identity matrix, and therefore this matrix right here is the inverse of A transpose, which is exactly what this identity is saying, that this matrix right here is the inverse of the transpose. So two interpretations of this expression. One is what I just said, and the other is that the transpose and the inverse commute. So what we did in this video was discover first by an experiment that the inverses of a matrix and its transpose are the transposes in their own right. And then we use very elegant matrix algebra to prove it in a very general case.